Hello, Facebook, how are you? Aw, sweet Sarah. First one on. You are so precious. Hey, Chantel, Sarah, I got your thank you note. And you are quite possibly one of the sweetest girls that I've ever met. So thank you so much. Um, I'm going to have to figure out how to shift those comments over at some point because my ADD is at a level, it's at a level 11. 11. That's kind of a bad spinal tap. Um, impression but some of y'all will get that reference some of you will not so yeah so thank you Sarah that was absolutely precious of you I really appreciate that okay so listen one of the weirdest and worst parts of Facebook live is waiting for them to gather your audience so awkward I don't know what to do in the meantime you're not allowed to play music or they'll copyright and mess you know it messes it up and so you just get to sit here and watch me be awkward while we collect, we gather the viewers, we collect the audience. So in the spirit of full disclosure, I feel the need to tell you that I brushed my teeth and put on perfume before this. I don't know what my problem is. I don't know why I think that you can smell my breath or just smell me in general, but it's this weird thing that I do. I don't know why. It's like I'm getting ready for a date or something. So that was also weird to say. I've been married for 16 years, but okay. Before I say anything else, absolutely stupid. Let's try. <laughs> and you guys have zero desire to listen to me give you business tips. Um, let me just jump in and share with you guys. I look like an oily mess, probably. Um, just share with you guys. Something has just been different for me about this year. And really, the truth is that it started at the end of 2018. And so I, I'm i just too excited not to share, I think. Um, and I just, I hope that it helps somebody else because my goodness, I know that we are over... Um, oversaturated with all of this information and you know self-help and all of that so I don't want to be one more you know noisy voice um, or annoying person out there with uh, sweaty cheeks and too much perfume on <laughs> but I feel like man if I can help somebody with this thing that I was struggling with for a while then gosh I really want to I really want to share and I want to help so I wanted just to tell you a few things that um, I don't want to be preachy and tell you things that you can do to make 2019 amazing. I guess I want to tell you things that I feel like I'm learning and still in the process of learning, which is so fun. Um, I don't have this all figured out yet, but just things that I feel like um, are, are helping me. And so hopefully these things will help you as well. Um, all right, so the very first thing that I had to do was decide. So I wrote down this word decide at the, um, I guess this would have been at the end of November. I really, for a while, um, I wanna say this the right way so that it's not misconstrued, but um, I really, for a while, kind of wondered and um, went, just felt very back and forth in my mind about whether or not I was in, um, if I was still able to make an impact in my industry, if I was still um, able to not just be like a one hit wonder to go to the next level. And so for me, um, I kind of was back and forth, I, I, like one toe in and one toe out kind of thing. Um, I'm going to have to shift this over to the side because they're keeping like little angry faces. And so I don't know why someone would be angry, but I'm seeing anger. It just doesn't feel like a appropriate emotion to have at this moment. I don't know, but uh, it's distracting. So I move that. Okay, so I just had to decide that I was done lying to myself. I was believing the lie and telling myself I was just believing this lie, a lie about who I could be and who I couldn't be. And so I had to make the decision that I was done with that and done telling myself that I could be this or that or that I couldn't be this or I couldn't be that or that that's not who I am. Um, things that I really did want and things that I felt like God had called me to and told me to do, but I was too busy lying to myself 
um, to actually decide to do those things. And so my new mantra has kind of become, someone is going to do it. Why not me? Someone is going to be number one. Why not me? Someone's going to make a billion dollars. Why not me? Someone's going to do all these things that they were scared to do. Why not me? And so um, I think the number one tip I would give you is to quit lying to yourself. That's one of the greatest things that you can do is to get honest with yourself. And if you are in the place where God has you and you are supposed to be, and you know that and you're assured in that, then you guys stop lying to yourself and believing the BS that you can't do this. Quit saying things. My poor team got an earful of this yesterday. Quit saying things like, I'm just so discouraged. I just can't. I just don't like, I just don't know how, which PS, my team knows that if you complain, um, that's what you sound like in my head. You sound like this voice. I don't like, I just like, I just like can't, like I can't even actually. And it's not that I can't um, empathize or that I can't be there for you or that I can't say I get it I've been there but at a certain point you have to decide that you are done staying in the same place that you are done believing the lie that you can't be exactly who you want to be for whatever reason because the problem is there's too many other people out there in life with that are less fortunate, that have less resources, that have less friends, that have less influence, and they're doing it. So you can do it too. So I would highly encourage you to quit lying to yourself. Um, it's something that I had to do. I had to decide and say, all right, this is where I'm at. This is where I'm staying. This is where God has me. Now let's go. Um, some of the phrases I use, I probably are not appropriate to use on this. Okay, I'll save them. I'll save them for my inner circle. <laughs> I almost said my phrase and it's not, it's not appropriate for, it's just not appropriate for a Facebook live. Okay. So the, the other thing that I've had to realize is, um, it is to be willing to change. Now I know a lot of the advice and the tips that we get, um, in our industry are to, and in sales are, you know, stay in your lane, run your race, do, you know, do the things that you're good at. And I am not, this is not what I'm talking about. I'm not saying you need to run from the things you're good at and, and, or anything like that, but you have to be willing to change when things aren't working anymore. I was on a zoom the other day with some leaders and that was one of the things they said, Hey, is what got you? Uh, to ambassador, is that the, are those the same things you're still doing? And the truth is, um, it's, it's a lot of it is no, a lot of what I did to get where I am, um, hasn't been what's kept me where I am. Does that make any sense? So a lot of what got me here isn't what is keeping me here. And I want to give you a couple of examples. Um, you know, of how I've had to be willing and you're going to have to be willing to, Keep what's working, but also try new things all the time. Don't get so stuck that you're unwilling to find the thing that's working. Um, P.S. Small tangent. I feel like a lot of times this is where we lose people. We lose people um, because they begin to get discouraged. They begin to get unhappy. And instead of looking for something new and fresh, and instead of as far as a new and fresh approach or a new and fresh way to do this business and to be in sales, what they'll do is they'll say, oh, it's the company. Oh, I need to go somewhere else. And I'm here to tell you that's not the answer. It's that's not the answer. The answer is, um, the answer is absolutely sticking with something, finding what you're good at, sticking with it, but then also being willing to change and evolve. And so um, here's an example of that. When I uh, first joined, I could post one before and after picture, and I would have five people in my inbox saying, what is that? I want some. Here's my credit card, right? Um, I, I could do that. When I do that now, guess what? It, that doesn't really work on Facebook anymore for me. I'm not saying that that never works, but it doesn't work in the same way. And so if all I expect to do is build my business the way I did in 2011 and 2012, I'm going to be so upset and I'm going to be watching my business crumble and then wonder what happened. And the truth is, is that maybe I just wasn't willing to try something new. Everything is changing right now. Um, the world is absolutely changing. Technology is moving at rapid warp speed and it, you've got to be willing to grow and change with it. 
And so, you know, another example I've got is there was this whole team and this whole group of people that came up and killed it on Facebook business pages. Um, that was where you could boost a post for like $2 and get 50 loyals. I mean, it was crazy, you guys. There was a time whenever business page was all about uh, how many likes can I get and the number of likes that you got um, is what completely determined how successful your business page was. And then that started changing. And then uh, Facebook changed this again. And then I remember when online parties were the thing and we would have one online party and get 20 new team members. And, and here's the deal. It's not that those things don't work at all, but they don't work the same way. And if all I was willing to do and all you're willing to do is dig your heels in and say, well, this is what got me where I want it. This is what got me where I am. And if it's not going to keep working, then I guess this just isn't for me. Can you see how asinine that really sounds, right? Like we have to be willing to say, okay, where's everybody moving? What's the new trend? What can I do to help increase my reach and grow? And so what I've had to realize is that I want to find the things that work for me and the things that have done really well, the things that I'm good at, but also be willing to change. Um, you know, uh, host a post is killing it right now. Um, host a post is where so many of my team are just rocking it and getting so many new people. It's been amazing. But let me tell you what, in a year, host a post may get you nothing. It may be something that it's like crickets. You've got, are, does that mean that you're going to go, well, I'm not good at this business anymore? No, we just we found something that worked. It did really well. Now we find the next thing that works. And I just want to encourage you that if you are one of those people that's in a rut and you're stuck, look at your action steps. Look at what you're doing day to day. And if it's the exact same as what you were doing in 2011 and 12 and 13 and 14 and there's been no change, but your income is dropped or your level is dropped or your team is going down in numbers, then there's probably a correlation and you've got to be willing to change. So I had to realize uh, a while ago. What I did to get to where I am is not going to keep me where I am. I've always got to be willing to level up and learn new things. So there's that one. Number three. Um, I am not even watching these comments. I'm sorry. Uh, I hope you guys are being nice. If you're not, please be nice. Okay. So this is the big one. This is the last, uh, this is really one of the last things I wanted to share with you, but it has been the biggest game changer for me. And again, it started at the end of 2018 and it was something God showed me that has been a complete game changer for my brain. Um, and you guys, j just like all of you, when my brain is healthy, everything else, right, seems to fall into place. Uh, my business, my marriage, my parenting, all of that seems to be in a completely different place whenever my head is right. And so I felt at the end of last year, if I'm just being 100% vulnerable and honest, I just felt at the end of last year very um, tired. I felt very mentally drained. I felt exhausted. I don't know that my team would have seen that or known that because I continued to do what I need to do and be consistent. But on the inside, things just were not good. And I think the biggest struggle I had was that I never felt like I was doing enough. I don't mean like I'm not enough as a person. Um, I never felt like I could do enough to keep up. That, for example, when my business, when I had a great day in my business, then um, I felt like I was neglecting my marriage or my kids. Whenever I um, had a great day with my marriage and parenting, then I would feel like I neglected my business. And I just never felt like I could keep all of the plates spinning quite right. And so on the way to a marriage retreat last year, actually, God showed me um, something that completely, like I said, has just rocked my, just rocked me to my core and completely changed the way my brain is functioning. And that is to recognize the season of life that I'm in, the things that are important to me, the thing, the place God has me and be amazing in those things. Everything else goes away. Everything else doesn't get to take precedence. Everything else uh, doesn't hold the same importance. So here's what I mean by that. If this season of life that I'm in, and again, this is my season. I'm not saying that this is your season, but this is mine that I'm in and where God has me. Uh, my season right now is, uh, and my priorities are my marriage, my kids, my two sweet girls, um, my business, and my relationships. That's it. 
And the problem was, was I was trying to juggle 400 other things and be all these other things. And it was exhausting. And so I was half-assing everything. Can I say half-assing? I guess I can. I don't know if I should. Please don't turn me in. Half. I get it from my grandmother. <laughs> my potty mouth. 90 year old grandmother. Um, sorry, half, I was halfway uh, doing all of these things in life. And it honestly was exhausting. Um, and I'm not even really a perfectionist, but it was just still, I was so exhausted, you guys, because I never felt like I was doing or could be enough to anyone. Um, and so I, God had me write down these, these categories had me write down these, you know, these, these areas of life where he's got me right now that are the most important. This is the season of life I'm in. And then he kept giving me the number three over and over. So the number three just kept coming up over and over and over. And I started writing down the top three things. Um, I started writing down the top three things in each of those categories that I wanted to be known for, that I wanted to be remembered for, that were the most important to me and things that I, were that I was going to be intentional about. So for example, instead of just assuming that I knew what kind of wife my husband wanted me to be, um, I wrote down my list of what I thought and what I thought made me a good wife and what I thought would make me a good wife and that would make him happy. And then I asked him. And it was funny, our, only one of them actually matched up. The other two, they weren't even on my radar. And I started, and so I said, well, what about these other things? And he was like, I don't, I don't care. I mean, that's nice, but it's just not, I mean, it's not, it doesn't do it for me. It doesn't make me love you anymore, I guess. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, but I'm not, that's not my thing. And I, it was so um, eye-opening to me that these areas where I thought, gosh, I'm failing. And these areas where I had felt so much guilt, um, I was able to start letting them go because that's not even what was important. And so I, I did the same thing with, with my parenting, you know, and one of the things that I've done um, that's been, I mean, just absolutely, I mean, to say the word life changing, it just, I know that's an overused phrase, but my gosh, I don't know how to explain it, except it really is changing my life every day. I'm nine bajillion times happier. Um, but, you know, one of the examples I have as, as far as my parenting goes was, you know, there's this long list of all these things I could be and that I want to be and that I think I should be and that I think society wants me to be and that I wonder if Jesus wants me to be and I wonder if my husband wants me to be. And I really just kind of stripped all of that away. And, you know, one of the things I wrote on there was a lightheartedness and a laughter. I want my, I want my kids to take that approach with life. I don't want them to have anxiety and I don't want them to worry constantly. Um, and so, that is something I'm intentional about, about being spontaneous and laughing a lot and um, being silly and turning on music and, and, and just having random dance parties and, and teaching my girls, it's okay, is that going to matter in five years? Girls, it's not. Um, and I'm having to be intentional with that because I constantly felt that pull, like I know so many of you do that are moms, that that pull of, um, I'm not enough. I'm not doing enough. We're not, we're going to be late. We're going to be, you know, I got to put you in this and we got to rush from here. We got to rush. And I was just exhausted and I never felt like I was doing a good job as a mom. But it's funny whenever you see three things down on your list and you go, okay, I can, I can kill these three things. These are things that I can do. And everything else I've been able to go, no, I'm sorry. I can't do that. Or no, thank you. Or thank you for inviting us. But no, because it doesn't fit into these categories. And so I've kind of been able to just run this, uh, run everything that comes into my life through this filter. And again, it's been absolutely amazing. And I've done the same thing with my business. What do I want to be known for in my business? And you need to ask this question to yourself too. It will change the way that you do business in 2019. I don't care if you're in network marketing like I am. I don't care if you're a real estate agent, if you're on here and you do hair or bikini waxes or I don't know, I can't think of any other weird things, but whatever it is that you do, you have to, and not that it's weird that you do bikini waxes, like good for you, we need that in life. It's not what I meant. Um, but if you look up and you have found yourself scrambling and all over the place trying to be all these things to all these different people and you're constantly feeling guilt and you're never feeling like enough, it's probably because your, your list is this broad versus just a couple of things that you could be doing this very short list and being awesome and killing it at those few things. And so I made my list for my business. I made a list of the things I wanna be known for, the things I wanna be remembered for, the things that bring me joy, 
not to just con Mari you, but like <laughs> what sparks joy? Hmm. But what truly, like what does spark joy in your business and make you excited to get out of bed in the morning? Those are the things that you need to be the most focused on. Now, obviously to get there, we've got to do crap we don't want to do. I hate follow up. I hate some of the things that I have to do as a business owner, but my gosh, I would be lying to myself if I said that this job um, were, were harder than any other job out there. It's not. It's an amazing job. And so obviously we're going to have to do things we don't always like, but I wake up and I am excited to do my job because I feel like I know what I'm trying to accomplish now. I'm not... I'm not over here looking at this lady and what she's doing and then looking over here. I'm only looking to be inspired. I'm not looking to compare and to feel guilt and to worry that I'm not doing enough. And so I would just encourage you to get quiet, get still. I know a lot of people are doing resolutions and all of that. Um, I'm pretty terrible at resolutions. I, again, have tried more than anything to like, what can I add to my life? Um, because... I really, really want to look up and know that I was intentional with the time that God gave me on this earth, that I was intentional with my marriage, that I was intentional with my kids, that I was intentional with my business and intentional with my relationships. That's my season. And there will be a time whenever my season changes and I'll be willing to make a new list then because that guilt is suffocating and that guilt causes you to be inactive and that inactivity is what produces fear and that fear is what puts you into this spiral of what am I even doing and am I in the right place and where am I? It's like I can trace it all back now. Um, and so I guess if I can help, help you stop that cycle before it even starts by being proactive and saying, okay, what does God want from me? Where am I at right now? And what three things do I want to focus on within the categories of my life that, that where God's got me right now? And so, um, yeah, so that's really it. So decide, I sprayed all that perfume for 21 minutes to talk to you guys, but decide that you're done lying to yourself. Decide that you are done telling yourself who you can and cannot be. Um, the second thing, be willing to change. Yes, work within your gifts, but always be willing to learn new and change and grow. Um, oh, I got a book. My last thing, I'm sorry. There's, my, there's like the tiniest little note. Um, and then the last thing, is or the next to last thing is picking those three things and being intentional the rest of it let it go and don't feel guilt um okay so my team knows that this is uh kind of been a uh i, guess, I hate to use the word mantra again but uh, a mantra of mine we actually named this and we named our team page this this massive belief massive action and so this year what um and even last year that is what we have been the most focused on on my team is you can do all the self-development that you want, but if you don't couple it with action, it's not going to matter. If you take massive action in your business or in any area of your life, but you don't couple it with the belief that you can do this and you don't couple it with a strong why and you don't couple it with a, with a very um, deep sense of purpose of why you're doing this and what you're doing it for, then it's not going to matter. And so to me, the magic that I see happen in people's businesses, whenever you combine an incredible belief in yourself, in your business, in what you're doing, right? When you combine that belief with the action. And the problem is that we try to do two different ones or we think that one is going to get us there. Just believing in yourself is not going to get you there. I have girls that every month enroll one customer and they'll, and when I ask them their goal, they're like, I'm going ambassador. I'm like, that's, that is a great goal. And that is lofty. And I am glad that you believe in yourself. And I think you should shoot for the stars. But I also feel like if you don't couple that incredible belief with some incredible action, then your goal is never going to be reached. And the flip side is true. I have watched so many people on my team be top enrollers, um, be top producers, continue, continually just throw so much into their business. And the one thing they were lacking was the belief that they deserved it or the belief that they really could do it or the belief that it wasn't all going to go away whenever they finally reached it. And so once that belief happened and it lined up with the action, you guys, it's like magic. And so that's what I want for you this year. I want for you to let the guilt go, decide that you are done lying to yourself about what you can accomplish, be willing to bring new things into your business and try out some new stuff while keeping the things that are working for you, and then combining that massive belief and massive action. And I may have already said that, but those are the things that I want for you 
more than anything this year. It's really what I feel like God's got me focused on, and I could not be more lit up and excited. And my team knows it's not even just this feeling that I have. I was talking to, I talked to Cammy and Mark and Pam. I've told them all about this. Like, it's not even a feeling, you know, so a lot of times at the beginning of the year, we just feel really good and we feel really excited. It's not even a feeling. It's just this resolve that I know that I've made my mind up that this is, I know what I'm going to accomplish and I know what I'm going after and nothing's going to stop me. It's this resolve, this deep, um, like rooted confidence that I've got. And I want that for all of you. So hope you have an amazing 2019 and I can't wait to see hopefully a lot of you. I know a lot of you, um, I'll get to see you next week at conference and I can't wait for that. And those of you that are in other industries, I hope this helped as well. It doesn't matter if you're in sales or real, Hey, we've already got down that weird list that I made. I mean, it, it could just get weirder, but whatever business you're in, um, I pray that helps you too. So, all right, you guys have a fantastic night. Let's go, uh, let's go and put some of this stuff into practice and not just talk about it, but be about it. So y'all have a great night. Talk to you soon.